After the team with the highest pick popularity lost in week one and week two in NFL Survivor, will we get a safe week three? Heck no. The four teams with the highest pick popularity in week three, Tampa Bay, Las Vegas, Cleveland, and Cincinnati, all lost. We'll go over the carnage of week three and get you ready for week four coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley. And we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. And we are at a loss for words. You mentioned the top four that went down, Eric. Even the Niners went down in kind of, you know, fascinating fashion. Uh, man, what a week. Man, I don't. OK, so let's let's get let's let's address the elephant in the room. Not only did Tampa Bay, my pick and your pick, lose they got absolutely demolished by denver you know one of the reasons i really like the tampa bay pick was that i want i want to feel like the team i pick can dominate the line of scrimmage and denver had one of their key offensive linemen out and watching a game was so frustrating denver was able to dump quick passes off and with guys that are always wide open and even when they even when they threw deeper passes, he had time, a clean pocket. Yeah, no, it was it was quite impressive, really. If you if you uh, if you were expecting uh, Tampa Bay to have a letdown, then I guess that happened. But um, Denver really coached up Bo Nix. He, he had a great game, uh, and defensively, they had a fantastic game. Um, you know, I, I don't really know what to think this year in the NFL altogether, Eric. I mean, it's a crazy year. Well, you know, you mentioned on the show about how the fact that even though they beat Detroit, a far better team than than, than Denver, they got like outgained by a ton. And I, I just think uh, Tampa Bay probably was not as good as we thought and Denver probably not as bad as we thought. But it would be it, it, I would feel worse, Michael, if it was sort of like, OK, well, we should have pivoted to other games that we 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 liked. And yeah, we gave you the cautionary tales with those other games, but look, I I was not on Buffalo because I your only out was Buffalo and the Jets to survive this this week if you're like Michael and I where we already picked Seattle. Um so Buffalo and the Jets I think I might have gone the Jets if they played Sunday. I just really hate playing Thursday night games if I have other games I like about as much, and that was the case this week. Yeah, and uh, I, I mean, the Buffalo Bills looked absolutely phenomenal this this last week, uh, and obviously coming off that week uh, prior week um, with the Dolphins, but uh, in week one, they didn't look great. And so, and the Jaguars... You know, I think there was still some possibility that they were going to fight for the AFC South. But as it looks like right now, I mean, who knows if Trevor Lawrence is going to keep his job? It's it is an interesting time in the NFL. And what's interesting about that Jet game, because that's the game I'm like, maybe I could have gotten to. And it wasn't just as Thursday. It was more than just the, the, the game. I mean, New England was playing a lot better ball than I, I thought. Right. So they had beaten Cincinnati. Apparently, that's not very difficult to do. Um, they had beaten Cincinnati, played close with the Seahawks, took them to overtime. And it just, I just felt nervous about that game. So kudos to you guys if you somehow survived this crazy, crazy week. Um, anything else about week three before we turn our. No, we got to turn to this next week because I know that's what our viewers want to talk about. And we don't have any t games to talk about. So I think we should get right to it. All right. So. Uh, it, we're talking. We're looking at six key games for people to focus in on. We got two very large favorites: San Francisco, ten-point favorites at home against New England, and Kansas City at home, eight-point favorites over division rival LA Chargers. And then we have four other games. We have the Jets, seven-point favorites over Denver. The Houston Texans are six-point favorites at home against Jacksonville. And then two four and a half point favorites who are actually on the road: Dallas at the New York Giants and the Cincinnati Bengals at Carolina. So I will start, Michael, and talk about. Let's talk about this Cincinnati Bengal Carolina game. So 
the one thing that I think I said that was right. There wasn't a whole lot of things I said that was right last week, but that 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 I was really afraid of this Carolina team when Andy Dalton took stage because Bryce Young had been so incredibly bad. And I thought Andy Dalton, I think I called him the, maybe the best backup in the NFL. Even I didn't think he'd throw for 300 yards against your Raiders. I know you saw that that game. I and I don't know what's going on with Cincinnati. It's mostly on the defensive side. This game scares me. I I I'm not I can't pick. I know last week you gave the kiss of death saying maybe you save Cincinnati for this week. I'm not picking Cincinnati this week. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I think that uh, that Carolina really is a different team with Andy Dalton at the helm. He's just experienced. And, you know, we have seen time and time again the importance of a good quarterback. He's got a nice little connection uh, with Deontay Johnson, who felt like he was absent in prior weeks. And he's making everybody play better. Chuba Hubbard had a, Chuba Hubbard had a nice game as, as well. I, I do think that, um, you know, Cincinnati's offense is clicking finally. Obviously, their defense isn't. Um, and so I, I feel like, um, uh, not that the commander's defense was anything special. I feel like, uh, Cincinnati should have their way much better than, than the Raiders did with this Carolina defense. Um, but they got to figure out things on, on, on defense, the defensive side of the ball before I think we can start to pick them. I do think Cincinnati is still a team that could vibe for the playoffs and if that's the case they have to win this game um so i'd like to think they're going to do what it takes but like i think like you say i think i'm staying away from this game but man this with what's going on in the nfl i'm nervous about all these games eric <laughs> well this is where it gets fun folks because usually in our nfr server analysis there's a period of time in which we have an active and then we get eliminated. And once I get eliminated, I can usually play a little faster and looser. So let's see what I want to do with your guys' survivor life. Um, let me ask you, looking at the two four-and-a-half-point spreads, right? So we just talked about Cincinnati on the road at Carolina. And Dallas is on the road at the New York Giants. And I, we can talk about that game in a second. Who do you feel more comfortable with? I think I feel better with Dallas. Um, you know, Dallas obviously had a pretty rough start to that game um, against uh, the Ravens coming off a pretty bad loss the week before. But it feels like, um, you know, uh, Dallas got a little life towards the end of that game. And more, maybe that was because the Ravens felt like they were out, you know, so far ahead they didn't need to to play it close. But Dallas actually made it a game right there at the very end. And even though the Giants had a few things clicking, they've really figured things out with this Malik neighbors. Uh, I still feel like that offense is not good. And, you know, I'm not that impressed with their defense either. The only thing I think the Giants really have going for them uh, is that uh, this game is in New York. And so um, and while I don't feel much better about Carolina than the Giants, as a defense, um, uh, or sorry, as a, as a, as a, an opponent, I do feel a little bit better about Dallas's defense, despite the, the really bad game two weeks ago, um, than I do about Cincinnati's. And so, uh, I think this game, you've heard me say this before is just what Dallas needs to get them back. Right. So I feel better about it, but do I feel better about it than some of these other games? I don't think so. How about you? Yeah, I, I think we're going to disagree soon. I, I hope, but yes, I feel more comfortable with Dallas, but they would definitely not be my pick. Even me who would like to roll in to die when it's not my survivor life wouldn't recommend picking Dallas, but between Dallas and Cincinnati, I do like Dallas more. This Malik neighbors is something special. So, by the way, if you might go, in, wow, Daniel Jones is starting to really figure this out. No, these passes are still bad. It's just Malik Neighbors is making some unbelievably great uh, catches and getting open. And so, um, you know, he's by far the best weapon that in the passing game that they've had in a very, very long time. But like you say with Cincinnati, Dallas desperately needs this game. They got to get, if they're, they're supposed to be as good as we all thought they were. Um, they need to take care of business. But let me go to a game, Michael, that I actually really like. Houston is at home, six-point favorites versus Jacksonville. 
the boogeyman Jacksonville, winless Jacksonville. But I have a sense of looking at them and going, oh, no, maybe they'll upset the team I'm picking. So I'm a little afraid. That's why I didn't pick them against Buff. I didn't pick Buffalo last week. But at some point, we've got to figure out that this team is not that good. And here's the reality with Houston. They are good. I know they just got humbled by Minnesota, these giant killers. Minnesota beat San Francisco and now uh, beat Houston. They, they beat them 34 to 7. But you've got to pick Houston, an NFL survivor. You have to. You can't go for a season not picking Houston. And they only have one more game that is anywhere near as good as this. And that's when they host Tennessee. And you got to wait to week 12. So. Man, if you're feeling like rolling the dice this week and you want to pivot off some of the high spreads, I like Houston as an option this week. Yeah, and there's been talk about Trevor Lawrence being sit down. For Mac Jones, I mean, I if Mac Jones starts the, the game, even the spread will go up, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, something's wrong with Jacksonville. Um, you know, I, I don't know if Doug Peterson's heart's not in it, but there's something wrong in Jacksonville. Now, yes, what happened in Houston to Houston and Minnesota is a little bit scary, but this Houston team is for real. They're going to make the playoffs this year. They need a win. They're going back home. They, they'll take advantage of that. Uh, I don't think it was just that Minnesota magically figured out C.J. Stroud and now everybody's got a playbook on him, although there has been some articles about that. Uh, this Houston team is pretty well put together, and right now Jacksonville is in shambles. I, um, I, I really think that Jacksonville has some more potential than they're showing right now, but their heart has been ripped out of their chest. That was embarrassing. The, first, the game was over in the first half. Early, you know, yeah, it was bad. I mean, they got to start showing it. You keep thinking because of uh, the past and some of the names that they they have. All right, let's let's move on to the New York Jets touchdown favorites at home against Denver. So this Jet team is coming off a mini buy after destroying uh, the Patriots on Thursday, so they get a little extra rest, but. You know, maybe it's because I was pulling so hard against Denver. They really impressed me how they ran that particular offense and how Sean Payton could get the ball out of uh, Bo Nick's hand so quickly. I know this is something that they were doing, but they uh, with short passes. But I don't know. I mean, not only did Nick's did my plans get nixed, survivor plans. I actually think, how good do you think this rookie is? Bo Nix? Yeah. Um, I think he's athletic. He's shown some sign of being uh, accurate. I do, I do think that he had some of the freshman jitters in those first couple games. And so get, getting him to run the ball was a great way for him to get comfortable. This is what you should do as a coach when your quarterback is just nervous. You know, I know there's this fear of, of injury. Um, and so, you know, I was kind of feeling that that Sean Payton was going to continue to protect Bo Nix, but I think he realized that, you know, if Bo Nix just has a lot of disappointment, then it's going to be a rough start to his career. So let him run the ball, you know, and hopefully he he's better. He's a big kid too, right? Like he can take a couple of hits. So um, I do think the Jets, that all being said, the, the Jets defense is quite a bit better than Tampa Bay's defense. They have two very good defensive backs um, that I think can shut down some of these receivers. Uh, and so it will really rely on Denver's ability to, on the defensive side of the ball, um, to do what they did to Tampa Bay, to the Jets. Uh, and right now Aaron Rodgers is clicking. And like you say, coming off a mini buy, um, you know, the Jets, Jets really should win this game, but I'm a little bit uncomfortable. You're uncomfortable with everything. Do you like the Jets more or Houston more? I think I like Houston more. And the thing you, you didn't also mention is um, that uh, Jaguars are coming off a, a Monday night game, right? So they, they have less rest as well. And so I think that bodes well. Uh, I think more, even more impactful than the extra rest for the team that's got things going is less rest for the team that's going against. And so 
I think that also really helps Houston out. Just for our audience, any idea what – I know they were missing Joe Mixon and and Damian Pierce. They're, so they're, they're down to their third string cam acres last week at running back. But uh, it just seemed that game got out of hand so uh, early with Minnesota. Anything you see in that that it was a cause for concern to pick no. Houston? I, I really feel like a big part of what's happening in the NFL in some of these games, you could even argue this with the Buffalo Jaguars game, is when things start to unravel sometimes, it just can compound effect. And this happens in, in football altogether, right? Like, you know, when you're down and you and you don't have a team that's particularly strong at, you know, uh, coming back through the air, you know, kind of it's it's going to happen, you know, poorly to you. And so even though that's not necessarily the the case with Houston, and they do have the they do have an offense that I think can come back in, in these games. I feel like there was kind of that compound uh, effect in that Houston game. So it wasn't as bad as the score showed where where the Buffalo Jaguars game really, really was. Right. Because, you know, it was. 34 to three before we you know turned the game on if we were watching some of the cincinnati game at the same time so uh it, it wasn't as bad as the score although you really got to hand it to minnesota right now they're playing good football all right so we've got the two games the games that i expect will be the highest pick popular they're certainly the highest spread and likely two teams that people haven't used yet in survivor san francisco and kansas city um Kansas City at home, eight point favorites over the LA Chargers. What do you think of this game? I think Kansas City has continued to getting bailed out a little bit in all these games. And so uh, you, you got to be really conscientious about the fact that Kansas City has really not beaten anyone uh, easily. You know, they, they easily could have lost that Ravens game, they, lost, they won it by a toe. Um, you know, uh, the Cincinnati game came down to that last second field goal that they kicked. Uh, and then, you know, just uh, Sunday evening, um, it looked like they uh, were going to have a last second lose to Atlanta. And, and, you know, the referees helped them out. If you read all that fodder. And so, um, you know, so that's one challenge. Now, you might say, well, I think Justin Herbert's out, right? So, you know, Taylor Heineke, uh, is he a Dandy Dalton-like backup? Not quite, but he's arguably one of the better backups in the league. And, you know, Jim Harbaugh is showing that he's a, a capable coach. This is a, you know, the, the Chargers are in the mix. This is an important game. They're playing against a division rival. Uh, you know, it's hard to win in Kansas City. I, I really think that might be the the factor here that that could take it really over the edge. Um, if it wasn't in Kansas City, I definitely wouldn't touch this game. Is Even this your with, new favorite game or do you like Houston more? Uh, between the games we've been talking about, um, I, I think I'm always a little bit nervous with the quarterback change when it's somebody who's has a little bit of success. It could be a little bit of an impact. So uh, I think I like the Houston game slightly more. How about you? All right. Well, finally, we can have a, a little bit of a disagreement. Um, so I love this game, especially, but I'm going to ask people to watch the news. So just, I, I don't even know what I want uh, if I'm picking Kansas City. Do I want Justin Herbert to play or not? I mean, he has an ankle injury. He's going to be hampered if he plays. Yep. And Michael, he looks to the left and... The left is Rashawn Slater. He looks to the right, and that is Joe Alt. Normally, both their left tackle and right tackle, Joe Alt is definitely going to miss this game. Rashawn Slater probably will miss this game. This L.A. Charger team, I mean, one of the things that they rely so much on is that offensive line to create holes for their running back. I just do not see. Oh, and another thing. The Chargers have their bye on week five. And historically, coaches tend to be the most conservative in bringing people back in the week before their bye. So I can't imagine them throwing Justin Herbert out there, especially without some offensive linemen. So uh, I agree with you, Casey hasn't looked great, but I think that they're not, they they know that this is a division game. And I think they're just the much better uh, team when they're both healthy and KC is relatively healthy. Uh, 
with the exception at running back. But I thought Carson Steele looked pretty good in week one coming in for Isaiah Pacheco. So any other yeah, comments? Yeah, Isaiah P. Ryan looks just fine coming out uh, the backfield with the pass as well. So, no, you're right. I actually had had uh, had missed one of those injuries. I thought I knew about the, the one. And so uh, offensive line injuries are huge. Going into the bye, actually, you're right. I mean, all the more reason that the Chargers – might be willing to, you know, maybe not necessarily put their best foot uh, forward because they are a potential playoff team. So, uh, yeah, you, you're right. Kind of all things way towards Kansas City getting maybe a little bit of an easier win this week than in prior weeks. Don't say I'm right. I was nothing but wrong last week. Fight me. <laughs> That's fair. All right, well, let's talk about this last game then. All right, the last game is the San Francisco 49ers 10-point favorites at home against New England. And the big news is San Francisco is hurting, literally. Christian McCaffrey is on IR, so he's definitely not playing. Debo Samuel is almost surely not going to play. And on their defensive line, Javon Hargrave, is out for a while those really hurt throw in the fact that kittle may or may not be able to play he didn't play last week and brock purdy you won't believe this injury michael he has a bad back yeah i'll say it he had to carry his team of course he has a bad back i mean um so there's a lot of reasons you could immediately say you're going to stay away from this game but this was the game I was touting that touting to everybody save San Francisco for this game. Because yes, they have some future value, but even with all these injuries, I think this is still their best game remaining because I still don't think New England is very good. They got crushed by the Jets this last week. Same Jet team that the Niners destroyed in week one. Granted, they were healthier in week one. But um, I still feel like I could pull the trigger on San Francisco. How about you? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I do I do see what you're saying about uh, Purdy putting the team on his back. Um, but they really just kind of collapsed towards the end of that Rams-Niners game. If you watch that game... Uh, it is almost shocking to believe that the Rams came back. Um, and, you know, uh, this Niners offense, even with the folks that they were missing, I know that Joan Jennings had a fantastic game uh, and, and kind of made up for, but but Ayuk was open several times. They didn't get the ball to him. Um, and so Purdy actually missed a couple of, uh, of open receivers uh, a few times. And they didn't really rely on the run like you would have expected them to do, especially given the score. So you got to hand it a little or, or, or put a little bit of that on offensive play calling. Uh, I, I, I think that the Niners are going to figure a few things out this week and make sure that they get a win this week. But you've heard me say that before. Um, so, you know, I don't know why I feel like I have to be so cautious with all the 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 challenge that we've seen in prior weeks, but I, I agree. I think this is actually my favorite game of the week, um, and part of it's because it's against the New England Patriots. New England has to do the uh, granted that they are rested with the mini buy, but they do have to make that long trip over to San Francisco. Um, I think a big thing that I would want to do if I was still in Survivor is I want to find out, want to follow these injury news. You know, getting a kittle would really help trip williams went out of the game but i i think he's fine he came back in that game yeah. he's i think he's almost the most critical out of all of these guys that yeah. he's playing with the exception of course brock purdy brock purdy has you have to feel confident that he is 100 percent healthy so i'm gonna make my official suggestion for people um so realistically and looking at these six games i can't recommend dallas or cincinnati and even though I wouldn't likely rec recommend the Jets, most likely, if you're still alive, you picked the Jets last week. That is the most likely scenario. So you're probably looking for someone besides the Jets. Um, although Houston is intriguing, um, my pick is going to be between Kansas City and San Francisco. And look, it's easy if Brock Purdy doesn't play. It's Kansas City. But I'm still going to say I'm going to pick Kansas City 
unless we get some surprise players that I don't think are going to play for San Francisco, like a Kittle. Um, and also on the making sure that uh, that the Chargers, I don't think they're going to be playing all these players who are, are hurt before they're by. So I'm, 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 I'm hedging, I know, but if I had to make a call today, it's Kansas City. And I go with the Niners unless Purdy doesn't play. And if I if he doesn't play, then I would go with uh, Kansas City as well. You had some influence on me. Um, so so tell me, do you think the last thing I want to comment? Do, let's talk about this New England team. Are they the horrible team that got crushed by the Jets? Are the team that upset the Bengals, if that's even an upset? Now they are winless and took Seattle to OT. Which wh- where's the real Patriots to you? Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, I think it's somewhere in the middle, but a little bit more towards the team that just got blown out this last week. Um, I, I think there's a little bit of a one dimension to that team. And if you figure out how to take away that dimension, like we saw so nicely with the Jets, with a good, strong defense, which you're, you know, even with the Hargrave injury, I think you still have a really strong defense in the Niners. So it could be a repeat this week for the New England Patriots. So I've got some really good advice for them. Are you ready for this, Michael? If you're still alive in your pool, pick who you think. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you've done – now, I don't mean if you bought back. That doesn't count. But if you are truly haven't had any strikes, really uh, impressive at how you how you dodged so many landmines. So, folks, uh, Michael, do you have something you want to let them to do – ask them to do? Yes, please. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to share your comments in the the comment section. I'm saying it backwards and like us, <laughs> like, it, so, share and subscribe. So Michael and I kind of talked about it. We're really hoping, especially if you watch this far in the video, that we still have your guys' support. That you'll still tune in as long as we have a good audience. We've been right at four thousand five hundred views for first, second, and third week of NFL Survivor. So please, even if you're out of your pool, still continue to tune in, put in the comment section what you think each week, and let's keep this community up. And if you guys do that, we'll pledge to continue to give you NFL Survivor content. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. We'll put two videos up on the screen we think you'll enjoy.